Okay, hi and welcome to 2017 uh, paper one of the junior share higher level and it's question three we're on at the moment. So don't forget, I suggest that you pause this video and give the section a try and when subsequently move on to the next part, do the same thing. Uh, if you want this set of notes with the screen grab question and the answer built in afterwards, well then um, email me at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address is also in the description for the video. So let's get stuck in. So question three here is word 5C, so there's different uh, low partial, uh, high partial and full grade. Part A says write 868 million in scientific notation, so in the form of A, so a number, times 10 to the power of something. Remember 10 to the power of 1 is 10, 10 to the power of 2 is 100, 10 to the power of 3 is 1000, 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000, etc, etc. Now all this is here at the end is kind of irrelevant, but it's just to keep this the way they want it. Okay. So they want n, the power, can be any number, well, not any number, but it can be, say, um, an integer, positive, negative, whole number, so really any number in this context. And your a value should be between 1 and 10. Okay, so I could write this now, um, sorry, the last thing there, a is an element of r, so a is a real number. That, that can be any number, basically. First thing I'll do is write out 868 million. Okay, so 868, and excuse this bad writing, it's impossible to do as well. A million is six zeros. Now you can argue how, how, you know, but who knows that? Well, you should. <laughs> you know a thousand is three, okay? We live in the world of millions and billions and trillions. So a million is six zeros, a billion is nine zeros, a trillion is twelve zeros, okay? So quint, quadrillion, quintillion, and these numbers, uh, while it's large, in terms of budgets and stuff like that, even what movies make, um, in terms of gross, whatever. That's common, not common language now. So these questions come up a lot more. We want to write that big number there in some shorter way. Now, some would argue scientific notation is harder to deal with because it just looks weird, but that's because we're not experienced with it. When you are trying to look at large numbers, scientific notation is very useful. So if I was to write this just a little bit differently, now I think I have the answer built in. Okay, let me just go to that. That's my 868, three zeros and three zeros, and my decimal point is there. Now we normally don't write that because it's not relevant. We know that the decimal point starts there, that's from there on is decimal. So why write more things and cluttered the page? But if we want to look at it like this, okay, every time I move decimal point one to the left, if I multiply by 10, the number still doesn't change. That's 868, uh, 100,000 such, okay, times 10, is what I'm saying there. So, 868, 100,000 is, by 10 is 868 million, okay. So I do it again, move the decimal place once more, okay, and with uh, two zeros at the end now. See, this number here is getting smaller. So that's, uh, 38,608,000, okay times a hundred is the same thing as eight or sixty eight million. Okay. Now I'm gonna keep going. Okay, I've moved it twice already. Uh once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. So six more times is by ten to the six. So decimal place is now here. Eight point six eight zero 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 by ten to the eight. Okay, because I moved it eight times in total at the start of the question. That number and that number are exactly the same. Now, you could argue, sure, it's just as complicated with all the zeros, but you don't you don't count those zeros. You don't write, you don't write them in because they don't, they're not relevant. So the easy way to write the number is 8.68 by 10 to the 8. And if you just extend it on, they're the same number. So the number has actually never changed throughout all these workings. I've just expressed it in different ways. Now, is my is my number that I multiply by all the tens of the powers, is that between 1 and 10? Yes, it is. Is my n uh, <clears throat> an integer? Okay, is it a positive negative whole number? That's a positive whole number. Happy days. Okay, so I've written it the way they want it. And you can kind of ignore this in a way, because they always want it in that fashion. Okay. Now, that's part A. Now, part B here says, during the Apollo 11 mission, it took approximately 1.3 seconds for a radio signal to travel 380,000 kilometers. Okay, 
Find the average speed of the radio signal in kilometers per minute. Give your answer in the form A by 10 to the power of N, so in scientific notation, again, A between 1 and 10, uh, N be a positive or negative whole number. So not fraction, basically. And then they want to round to two different places. There's an awful lot going on here in terms of the things you have to do and watch out for, but we'll go straight to the answer. Now, I'm writing out the statement that they get me. 1.3 seconds equals 380 to 80,000 kilometers. Okay. Now, if I, even if I didn't know what I'm doing, okay, I might as well manipulate this some way. If I find out how much it travels in one second, I can divide both sides by 1.3. Now, so 1.3 divided by 1.3 gives me 1. 380,000 divided by 1.3 gives me this number here, uh, 292,307. Now that'd be enough to definitely get me the low, low, the low partial here. Okay. Um, so we're looking here then at trying to make a statement for what they're saying. So my speed in kilometers per minute, okay, I uh, can give that by multiplying my speed here. Now I haven't, I haven't used 292307. I'm just using this to make things not say clearer. Okay. But that's 60 times the one second. Okay. I end up with 1.75 by 10 to the power of 7. So that's the speed in one minute. So that's the reason I multiply by the 60. Is to make it per minute. At this stage here, I had it in kilometers per second. Okay. But they want to make it a little bit harder on you. Okay. So they want it in minutes. So that's pretty much by the 60. Um, okay. Now the... That's there, so the, the, um, the units put in some support put the units in the way they, they, even though they asked for it that way. Okay, so now the next thing then, it says, um, in part C, in 2016, a spacecraft flew around Jupiter, the 68 million kilometers from Earth. Find how many minutes it would take a radio signal to travel that distance. Assume that the radio signal would travel at the same speed as your answer to part B. So whatever answer you got here, and let's say in part B you were stuck. You had no bog notion what to do. Declare an answer. Whatever answer you declare there will be wrong in part B, because it's wrong, and in part C it will be accepted as fully correct. So pick a nice round number. Something easy to work with. Um, so you have your, I've used the answer in part A, divided by the answer in part B here. So basically it's how many 1.75s by 10 to the 7 are there in that 8.68 by 10 to the 8? Now does this looks scary, but the calculator will do it for you. Okay. So, once I put it to the calculator, uh, I end up with 49.6 minutes. I would show my work often, all too often. I'll see answer written here, no work shown. And it'll be incorrect. And usually the person, unless you're guessing completely, knew what they were doing, but they did some calculation error. And very easy with a question like this to put in, t you know, mixing, mix up on the top one, 10 to the 7, by 10 to the 8 in the bottom, just not concentrate fully. Okay, so be, if you've shown the workings, and that's correct, even though the answer is wrong, you still get, you know, fairly decent marks. Okay. Now, uh, one then, there's no part D. Okay, so that's it for question three. Thanks very much, and see you again on question four.